Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it's time for our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 454. Get ready to be transformed. Now I said that right, not transformed, transformed. <laughs> I have got brand new product from my friend Fran over at Stampendous, and they're called Fransformers. Uh, the product is so new that it was driven to me last night. <laughs> Thankfully, Stampendous is only about two hours away from us, so they were able to drive it here last night so I could come in today and do this class for you. But that's not the only product I have for you and that's not the only thing that I'm going to be teaching you. But before we get there, let me let me give you a few little updates. If you have a Sizzix switch machine, a white machine, it has been sent over to Ellison. We are just waiting now for your tracking numbers and then all white machines will have been sent. No white machines left. If you have a Sizzix black machine that was scheduled for a July, a mid-July, you know, reserve date that's been pushed a little bit, a couple weeks. It's going to be pushed a couple weeks while I work on the sidekick orders. So if you placed an order for a sidekick with us during our warehouse sale, I'm working on your orders next, and then I will go back to the black switch machines and finish those up. Now, all of you know who have a switch machine. I sold them for $169.99. So we appreciate your patience and your understanding as I get through the, the stack of them to send over. We, I can only do so many a day. I, I, I have to do it after work hours, so I make sure that it's accurate. So just hang tight. But the people who place their orders for the sidekick machines place their orders before the rest of you for the rest of the black switch machines. So I'm going to work on theirs next and then I will come back to yours and I'll just keep you updated here. So hopefully you'll you'll watch even if it's just these first few minutes to get the updates. That way you know where you are and as soon as I start working on the black switch machines that have a reserve date of June, you will know. I will tell you absolutely. Now I have winner winner chicken dinner to talk about. Um, I've got two of them from 4.53, and that was with the GG stickers that are here. Uh, yes, now we have to staple all the extra stickers to the main sheet because we gave you an extra sticker sheet. So now we're working on that. <laughs> we didn't get that bundled for us. I tried. <laughs> So, if you placed your, your, if you put a comment on 454, you might find yourself with a $25 gift card to transform your crafting room with something new. <laughs> All right, our first winner is Susan. Susan Kempf. Hello, Susan Kempf. Is that you? Hello, how are you doing, Susan? You're a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Congratulations. But you're not alone because we always pick two winners every week and you always get a $25 gift card. It's already in your online account. You just have to go spend it. How easy can that be? Well, actually, I find spending gift cards harder than just spending regular money because like a gift card, it's like something special. So you really want to pick something amazing with it. <laughs> All right, our next winner winner is Beverly. Hello, Beverly Scott. How are you doing today? You and Susan have won a $25 gift card. And how did you win it? Well, of course, you already know. But for those of you who don't, these two lovely ladies posted a comment below. Down below me. There's a place to write a comment down below me. Your comment can be about anything. It doesn't have to be about this class or... It can be about your day, it can be about your family, it can be about something you recently crafted, it can be anything as long as it's kind. <laughs> if it's polite and it's kind, SMS Guy James is going to approve it, and then we have software that randomly selects our winner winners. So post your comment below, because you never know when you're going to hear your name and we're gonna do the winner winner dance in your honor. All right, so Beverly and Susan, are you ready? Are you standing up? Because really, I can't stand up. I have to sit here because I'm my own camera person. I don't have like overhead cameras and special lighting. It's just you and me. Just us. 
So for me to stay in camera, I have to keep sitting down. But you, you all can stand up and sing. You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to the two of you. Spend your money on anything that makes your heart happy because that will make my heart happy. All right, and for the rest of you, don't forget to post your comment below. If you're live chatting, a live chat comment does not count. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, we would certainly appreciate it. There's a little heart. It's got an SMS in it. Just hit subscribe. You know you want to, right? Just do it. Hit subscribe. I got to make sure I don't get into copyright infringement. I can't imagine I would, but let's just stay on the happy side of the YouTube gods. <laughs> Okay, so what do I have for you today? I have Transformers. This product is so new that like I said, it was driven up to me. It is stamps that are so unique and so specialized. I, I'm i jealous I didn't think of it of myself. I truly am. So I'm gonna get working on those. We're gonna be doing a lot of stamping. I'm gonna be including fine tech watercolor paints. Beautiful, not inexpensive. One set is okay. <laughs> the one set of the ear, the, the interference colors, that I think everybody should own. I do, I feel like you should own those. They're important because they, they add so much to everything else you already have. It's in addition to, it takes your inks, no matter whose inks, to a next level. The neons are just pretty and happy and they made my heart happy, but boy, they are premium quality fine tech paint. So fine tech is already considered a fine art medium. And that's because of the quality of the product. Not that you have to be a fine artist to use it. I am not, I don't proclaim to be, I'm not a good watercolorer, but if you're gonna use something and you can use the best, why wouldn't you? In fact, there was a, there was a couple in Sam's Club yesterday and they were looking at the different bottles of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil and light olive oil. And then there was an olive oil in a glass, uh, you know, a glass bottle. And the husband's like, well, which one do you want? And, and she's like, well, I don't want the light olive oil. And, and, and she said, you know, there's, this is a much better olive oil, but it's not that much difference in price. We're gonna get this one. I said, there's a lady after my own heart. <laughs> she knows that if you start with the best ingredients, you end up with the best finished whatever, whether it be a craft project or uh, or a pasta dish. She knew that, hey, for a couple bucks more, overall, it's not going to be, you know, it's not that much more, but the product was that much better. And the husband's like, really? And she said, yes, get the one in the glass bottle. So he did. Smart man. <laughs> like, oh, I like you. <laughs> you understand. You get me. But course I didn't say anything I just kept walking right on by with a big old smile on my face going uh-huh <laughs> so so we've got we've got fine tech paint for you they are not the only watercolor paints out there and 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 lots of options but these are beautiful they really are and the quality is so good that you use less <laughs> because the pigment is so high you don't need a lot which means they're going to last you longer than a less pigmented paint. You make your own decisions whether they whether they they speak to you, they don't, they fit your budget, they don't, something you want to save for, or you don't need them at all. You make the decision after seeing what you see and then and then craft. So and then I've got Brunzil pencils for you and I'm very excited. I did not get the Brunzil sharpener for you, but I did get a sharpener. I found a sharpener very inexpensive. So we are, and it works well. We're gonna tilt down, we're gonna get started for today. Uh, I will see you in a little bit. We're gonna be playing oodles of stamping, just lots of stamping. So get ready to be transformed <laughs> with, 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 with Stampendus's Transformer by Fran. Very excited to bring them to you. All right, down we go, ready? <laughs> so clever. All right. Do I think I'm good? Let's turn that up just a little. Uh, I think I can go. All right, let's see what we've got. Okay, so I've got Transformers and I have everyday set and I have holiday. So don't think everything's gonna be holiday cause it's not. I have everyday, but how cute is this guy, right? 
And then his friend. How cute is this guy? And ooh, you can see the iridescence. Can you see? Oh, see, that's the fine tech. Uh-huh. Isn't that pretty? So here I have another snowman. The thing is, both of these guys were done with the exact same stamp. Not the same stamp set, like you got a, a snowman shaped like this and a show, snowman shaped like this. No, they were done with the exact same stamp. 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 <laughs> really? Yes, really. And then I have these cute little gnomies. Now the gnomies are actually part of the winter collection or the holiday collection because they've got some some winter elements to it but they also have spring and summer elements to it so they could be every day and again these two are the same yeah i think they're uh, yeah they yeah they're the same same but different who knew right I'm going to show you how you get the same but different with Transformers. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with the Christmas holiday. All right, so there's there's three different stamp sets. There's the snowman. There's the snowman. And you said, wait a minute, you just showed me I only needed one snowman. I, I know. There's the gnomes. Aren't they cute? And you've got braids now the braids can be used with the with the bigger gnome the beard can be used with the smaller gnome and then you've got different little elements that you can then make them either holiday or spring summer fall whatever you want to be and then we have a sentiment set so warm winter wishes and you are snow wonderful and on a wintry day and in fact i'm going to open these up just in case we want to use them open them up just in case we want to use them now, what makes these so different? All right, let's take, let's, let's take, let's take this guy. Let's bring over a piece of paper. So if you were to walk into a retail store, whether it be a big box store, or it be an independent retailer like me, or if you were gonna see these online, and let's say at one of the huge major online retailers um, in crafting, there's a couple of them that are just enormous. Weirdly, we all, well, they start with the letter S too, but <laughs> we're nowhere near their size. But let's say you were just looking at these on somebody's website. It just looks like a snowman, and you might be going, I already have snowmen. I don't need another snowman. I've got plenty of snowmen. But you don't. <laughs> because these are different. And unfortunately, you can't get that from the packaging. There's not much that they can do in the way of packaging to make the concept understood. It's hard. When you design packaging, you've got about two seconds for a consumer to look at it and make an instant decision about it literally maybe two seconds it's not a lot of time and and so i think in a in a retail setting or, or online you might just pass this over not knowing what it is now they've put transformer on all the packaging so that you will know the difference between just a standard stamp set or a transformer so let's open this up And let's peel it off. What you're going to see is that the stamp is wide open. Wide open. And it's a heavier material, a heavier polymer than you would normally be accustomed to. It's, it's made very thick so that the stamp will go back into the same position every time it holds its form. But it also has enough give to let you start making different shapes with your snowman 
You want a, a fat little guy? You want a little chunky snowman? Fine. You want a tall snowman? Fine. Let's go ahead and let's get a block out and let's stamp. So because I'm going to be stamping multiples of these, I'm not going to be using a, a, a stamp positioner because I'm going to change the, the shape of my snowman. Now he's always going to go back to pretty much to, to the stamp that he is supposed to be. And there we go. He's on my block. I got a piece of paper. Ooh, I don't think I'm going to get enough on here. I think I'm going to grab a full size sheet. So let's get him back down. So this is a clear acrylic block. This is a clear stamp set. They just cling together like static. I think I'm going to use a bigger sheet of paper maybe. Yeah, that'll do. And I'm going to ink him up. So I'm using a Hero Arts India ink. You can use a Memento ink, depending on how you're going to color him. That's the ink you're going to choose. If you're going to use anything with an alcohol base to color him or a water base, you really want to try and stick with a India ink or a Memento ink because they do not move with liquid. They don't move with water. They don't move with alcohol. So let's give a good press. I haven't, I didn't prime him at all. So let's see how we do. And when I mean prime, I mean I didn't like take an eraser and get any residue off the back of the stamp or stamp off a couple times because from being on a liner, which you can see there's a, a, a piece of acetate there, it leaves just a little bit of residue, but that comes off pretty easily after you've stamped with the stamp a couple times. Oh, he looks good. Okay, one done. But I want to do the next, what's the next shape you want to do with him? You pull him off, and again, because he's a thicker, a little bit heavier, he doesn't tear. I mean, you, you really have to try, see, look, he's kind of like a rubber band. You really have to give effort if you're going to rip this. So now, let's do... How about we do something tall and I can move his little arm and I can change his head a little bit. So same stamp, but a totally different look. What if I want him to wave? Same stamp. Let's ink him up. Pretty cool concept, right? Oodles of options. And let's put him here. Now, I'm stamping on what I call a gush mat. We no longer have gush mats. A gush mat is just a stamp pad that lets your stamp sink into your paper a little better. It lets it kind of gush into it, giving a nice, not a soft gush, but a firm gush, but allowing the stamp to hit that paper and kind of be depressed into it. Giving you better contact. Yay! Okay, same stamp. Couple different, couple different snowmen. And then what if I took him And I wanted him kind of maybe he's melting. <laughs> oh. 
Okay. And one, two, three. Same guy, a couple different ways. And there's more. I mean, you can, and then when you peel him, he goes right back to his good old self. Right back to his good old self, absolutely. I can, I can change his head around and really have him look up to the sky. I don't know if he'll fit. I can change his arm around. Can you see the benefit of transformers? You're definitely not limited. And she's done two snowmen, so you have one that looks one direction and one that looks the other direction. And one's a little bigger and one's a little smaller. So maybe they're looking up to the sky because they're so excited about the snowfall. They're just waiting for it, saying, come on, snow. And of course, the set has other little elements to it. Absolutely. It's got, they both have like little hats and little smiles and... Oh, I didn't get his nose, but that's okay. You get the jest. Options are yours. And then when you're done, he just goes right back into his happy little, his happy little shape again. And like I said, like they have all the, they have little hats and little gloves and scarves and smiles and little accoutrements to just add to him. Let's put him there and we'll just grab the little smile and maybe a slightly smaller block. And even the little smile can be altered. Even the little smile can be altered and transformed. So how about we do, how about we do a nice big smile here on my first one. And the sentiments that go with these sets also can be transformed. They can be moved and swirled. Okay, so first one's got a cute little smile. Second one, let's make his smile a little smaller and a little higher. Hmm. Or maybe a little longer. No. Just make it a little wider, a little higher. I'm 
Okay, so the smile's a little wider, the smile's a little taller, a little, a little more smile. And then this guy, What if we give him a, I don't know what. <laughs> this guy's like, um, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> right? All done with the same smile. And then when you're done, you let go. And it goes back into its original position. They are just that cool. Really, they are just that cool. So there's the snowman. And let's put him right there for right now. And let's put him right there for right now. And they have, so one snowman goes one direction, the other snowman goes the other direction, and there's a slight size difference. So let's pull him off. And this one gives you Christmas lights and another little hat. And I mean, there's just a whole bunch of little extra goodies you get with it. So I'm gonna do, let's just do two of them. So let me grab the smaller of the two. And I'm just going to do him the way he's meant to be done. If you just pulled him right off, he's just like a wonderful little rubber band. And you're really going to have to work hard to, to tear it. You really are. They're very, very, very hardy. Okay, so now I've got here, looking one way, and let's do that little bigger one, and let's make him kind of tall and skinny. And you can move his head, reshape his head, reline his head in a different position. His head a little, maybe a little squatty. And maybe move his arm just a little bit. And let's do him. Because no two snowmen are ever the same, right? So now he's going to be facing Maybe we'll put him, we'll put him over here. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up. And then let's go back and do that little one one more time. And let's make him kind of tall too. Let's squeeze him into a tall. so I can get them to fit. Oh, just maybe, just maybe. Okay. Right? Cute. Easy to do. 
Now before I color anything, no, you know what? I think I will. I think I'll color these in first. Let me just, and I'm not going to do their little hats or the little, the little extras. I should do the little smiles on that guy though. Let's see. He's got a smiles, smaller block. And I can do kind of a wider smile on this guy because he's got kind of a wider face. Done. This one I'm going to make a little bit happier because his face isn't quite as wide. Done. And this guy is going to kind of like go, huh? Oh, I think that's good. He's like, what? <laughs> so each set comes with its own little smile. So that's going in the right direction. But frankly, you can move it any way you want. So <laughs> it really does make it very simple. Okay, so to color these, and maybe I'll just color these. Although I got a little bit of my fingerprint in there. Let's take some wipes and wipe off my hands. I got a little bit of ink going on my hands from moving them around. All right, to color these is pretty darn simple. I think I'm going to just start with my colored pencils. So I've got Brunzil colored pencils here. And I've got a 36 pack and Brunzil pencils are, uh, again, a, a more fine art quality pencil. They're a beautiful pencil. They're affordable. They're going to last you about forever. We do the 12, the 24 and the 36. I like the 36 because I like to have options. Let's see if I can pull this. I mean, yay, right? And you can see the one pencil that I took beautiful pencils. I was able to find a pencil sharpener, not a Brunzel pencil sharpener, but I was able to find a pencil sharpener that does a really nice job without breaking the lead important or the, the, the pencil, the color, really important and pretty inexpensive. They're around $3 and 70 cents each. So I bought what I could. We don't have a lot of them, but I bought what I could. So those of you looking for a pencil sharpener can now get it. Colored pencils are kind of unique when you color with them they kind of look like a crayon and you can certainly color and leave it looking like that but i like more of a refined look more of a finished look and that is where playing with mineral spirits and gamsol comes in so what's mineral spirits or Gamsol? Well, it's here. This is low odor. So I, I don't smell anything, but I know you might, but I just don't. And it, it can evaporate. So you need to make sure that that bottle is closed, closed, closed. I don't, I don't smell anything. And we get ours from Inky Antics because I love that they have this little, this little sponge at the top. If you have Gamsol or Mineral Spirits, they're also known as, I think Gamblin also sells them, you can definitely put some cotton swabs in a little takeout container here for salsa and put some of your Gamsol over the top of it and then you're gonna dip your stubby in there. You never wanna use too much Gamsol because you can never put it back in the bottle, which is why if you were to just pour some Gamsol in here and put my stubby in there, this is a compressed paper. That's all this is, is compressed paper. It is as porous as porous can be. If I were to put some Gamsol in here, well, here. If I were to put some water, pretend that this is Gamsol, and I put some water in there, my stubby is just going to start to absorb all of that Gamsol. It's gonna, now it's all the way up to here. I can never get that out. That's just, water's fine, I don't care. It'll dry and I, I can use this later. But the, the higher it goes, the more I put it in, 
the more the water absorbs into it, and I'm never going to get that out. And if that's Gamsol, that's product. That's holy smokes artichokes. That's good product that you're never going to be able to use. So if you need to put a little bit of a, um, a couple cotton balls in there and put some Gamsol in there, go for it. And, and that way you can dip your paper stubby into it. Inky Antics has taken that out of the, you don't even have to worry about that. They've got the little foam tip, put a little Gamsol on the top, and you just dip right into it. So what does this do? Well, it takes your, your pencil from a pencil into almost a paint. And you just go over it. So these pencils are wax based and that Gamsol works with the wax and you can see the softened difference. Gamsol side, no Gamsol. One looks like it's been painted, one looks like it's been colored with like a crayon or a colored pencil. I prefer this. So when I'm playing with my little guys here, I'm going to take the Stampendous liners. They do theirs uh, with a colored liner, which is very cool. Not everybody does. Let's see if I can get this on here. Okay, they do theirs with a colored liner. And that colored liner is a really good indicator of where shading and shadow can go. If you're curious about how to get the shading and shadow, look at the Stampendous liner and see where Fran's done it. She's the one who designs the colored liners. See, she's left a little, you know, a little wider empty space over here so that you have a highlight for there. She's just added a little bit of blue all the way around. Absolutely look at the liners to see if they can be of a help for you, especially if you are just starting. So if I took my blue and I came right up against my 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 uh, stamped line and I just colored a little bit of blue all the way kind of around and I'm just scribbling it in I'm not being overly careful I'm just trying to add some color in So if I wanted to, I could just leave them just like that. Or I could take my Gamsol and soften him out. So this one I'm gonna add even a little bit more blue. And a little bit less back here because they're facing the other direction. And again, I'm just scribbling. All I'm trying to do is get that color down there. That's all I want. This is not uh, difficult. It's not hard. There's not a lot of worry about doing it wrong. It's very successful. You're going to find that it's going to work the very first time you do it. And the beautiful thing is, if for some reason you don't like it, you're only working on paper. You'll have to forgive my fingerprints. <laughs> I've got fingerprints all in here. Okay, now I could leave him just like that and keep going and move on. Nothing wrong with him. But I'm going to take my Gamsol, dip a little bit in, and I'm going to smooth that color out. I 
and kind of draw it out so you've got a highlight and a mid-tone and a shadow. If I need a little more Gamsol, put a little more on. But look at the difference. Just straight colored Gamsol. It's a pretty big difference, right? And it doesn't take much time or effort. You can pre-stamp a bunch of these and take them with you and color them on a plane. You can pre-stamp a bunch of these and take them to the Senior Center or to the Girl Scouts or to the Boy Scouts. Do you have to use Brunzil colored pencils? No, of course not. Any wax-based colored pencil, you can go get Crayola colored pencils. Just know the better quality you start with, the better quality you end with. But to be honest with you, you know, if, if you're doing this for a, for a class or for a, a group of crafty friends, you know, maybe you just want to go get some inexpensive colored pencils. Now these are not watercolor pencils. These are just straight colored pencils. Not watercolor pencils. How cute he is with little tummy. And I can just go through and in no time at all be done with all of these. Oh, SMS crew is getting here. I hear them starting to walk on in. <laughs> so I'm here on an early Friday morning because they, they drove these stamps up to me last night. See, easy peasy. And I'm just softening that pencil. Now, if there's a place you want to go in and add more blue, I can. The beautiful thing about colored pencils is that you don't have to wait for anything to dry before you come back over and add more color. You can't say that with a watercolor pencil. Watercolor pencil actually can't ever get wet. <laughs> you really don't want it to get wet um, unless you're doing a straight tip to tip or, or tip to paint brush technique. But if I wanted to come back in here and add some more blue, sure I can. And I don't have to wait. I can just go in, add it, add some Gamsol. Blend it out. They're very wintry little snowman. So it depends. Do you like him just colored? Or do you like him colored and gamsold? And don't forget, I used, in this one, I used the same snowman. Just did him three different ways. And here I used the same snowman. Looking up at the sky, waiting for the snow to fall. And if I wanted to change my pencil, because this is paper, all I have to do is take the Sharpie this, that comes with the set. All it is is sandpaper and sand down the color I no longer want. Sand off the paper. and then it's ready to be used again.
ready to be used again. So you can see how long these little stumps are going to let you play. Now what if I took a gray? Let's just say, let's just say he's been in the, he's been out for a while, you know? He, he's now started to melt because the sun is coming up and he's been on the streets for a little while. And I just do a little gray for him. Not too much. So we don't want him to be dirty. But he's been he's been out there a little while. And I just do a little bit of gray. Just a little bit of gray. And then I come back in with my Gamsol. And I just soften that gray literally that fast. if I can get you in a little bit better. Literally, I'm just going over it to soften out that pencil look. So I've got Gamsol on this side and colored pencil not gamsold on that side so you can see the difference. Up to you which one works best. Which one you like, whether it's just using the pencil as is or just a little bit of your gamsol to smooth that color out. go in and add some orange for his nose and a little bit of Gamsol a hair bit more orange and in no time at all you're getting them done but maybe you like the blue you have options I could have gone in there and colored the whole thing. All right, let's put these guys to the side. And let's pull the gnomes. So the gnomes are also the same. They are a transformer, so they're going to move. And let's take our big one and let's grab a sheet of paper and let's stamp him just the way he's supposed to be. Just the way he's supposed to be. I feel like my camera is just off. I don't know why I feel that way, but I do. But we're just going to go with it. Ooh. Acrylic block, India ink. And let's 
stamp. One, two, three, A, B, C. Done, good. Now let's change them up. We want them a little taller, or maybe a little, maybe a little squattier. And let's change them up. With gnomes, my gosh, you could make them look like just about anything. One, two, three. A, B, C. And then this time, let's go a little taller. And maybe we, maybe we bend his hat just a little bit. to go forward or backwards. So he's got a little wonky gnome hat this time. Maybe we have a, I don't know if I'll fit them in there, but we'll try. Well, we'll try. I'll try and get him in there. He's a really wonky looking gnome, but that's okay. No two gnomes are the same. All right, well, I kind of got him in there. Same gnome, totally different shapes, and I could just keep on going. I mean, I could have made him really, 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 really. I mean, really wide. Or I could have made him really, really, really narrow. <laughs> and then you bring in The little hair. Okay, so let's see. The hair's the little beard. And let's do let's do a beard on him. So even the beard you can play with. Now let's, whoa, let's do a longer beard. Because they're all able to transform. Look at that one, and then look at that one. Same stamp. Regular beard, longer beard. Isn't that fun? I mean, you can go, you can go crazy with these. <laughs> you can just stamp and stamp and stamp because you can change it. So let's do... Let's do some pigtails kind of close together or some braids kind of close together. And then let's do some braids kind of far apart.
Now I've got braids close together, braids far apart. And I can go in there. to do and all I'm doing is kind of making where their hat would be since I've stretched them and moved them I'm just adding a little black ink a little back pencil just to finish off so they have a finished hat same stamp And then you can go in and you can color. And what if I did his, her hat? How about her hat? And I wanted to do it kind of a pink. So I can come in and just color really close to the stamped line. And this is a big hat, so I'm going to color kind of into it because I want most of it to be colored. But I'm going to leave some negative space. So you can see I didn't do a very good job coloring, but that's fine with me because then I'm going to take that Gamsol a little bit on my stub and I'm going to go in and I'm going to start to pull some of that color out and move it around and soften it up. And if I need to add more color, I can. It's always better to start with less and then come back in and do more than to color the whole thing. Now, if I wanted this whole hat to be just pink, I could have, oh, I got some of my black in there. I could have colored my whole hat just pink. In fact, I think I'm going to add a little bit more because I want it to come out a little bit further. I'm just going to do a very light color. I got a little bit of black from my, from my pencil. I probably should have done that in with a pen, but I don't have a black pen sitting here. So I just want my whole hat to have some pink on it. But I want it to have some shading to it. I don't want it to all be the exact same pink. I want to have some highs and some lows. Oh, I grabbed some black from that one too. All right. No, it's only paper. So now you can kind of see the hat's got some shading to it, a little bit too much in the center, a little bit too perfect in there. So I'm just gonna add some more color so it's not such a straight line. And kind of work it around. So the hat's got some color now. but maybe I want it to be even darker. I can take another color, a darker pink maybe, come in, go right over the top of it, right down that line where I've stamped, 
and I'm just scribbling, doesn't have to be perfect. And now I can gamsol that. And kind of blend that into my medium, my, my first pink. So I'm adding even more shading and shadow. The darker I get it on this one side, the more definition my hat will have. So cute! <laughs> and so easy. Can you blend colors? Sure, you can blend colors. Um, let's say we do his hat maybe in a lime green. So what if I did What if I did his hat kind of in a lime green? And I just color the whole hat kind of lime green. not dark and I'm just kind of scribbling leaving some empty space so now I just colored his whole hat kind of a light lime green hmm. and I come in here and I just blend that lime green to a nice soft finish. I'm gonna try and stay away from where I drew in his little his little hat. Okay, so nice lime green, soft finish. And then what if I come back and I do maybe I do this one. I come in and I add some teal. And again, you can see I'm just scribbling. Back with my gamsol. and pull that teal and blend it into that lime green. It's coloring made simple. Colored pencils are one of the easiest ways to color. because you really can't go wrong. You just can't, it's hard to go wrong with these. What if I did, a little bit of yellow. And then I did a little bit of orange. And I pushed that right up into the yellow. And then I did a little bit of red. And 
and a little bit of Gamsol. And I push that red right up into the orange. And then I did a little bit of purple. I think I'm supposed to do blue next. And a little bit of blue. And last one's last, a little bit of purple. Just a little bit of purple. They're so cute and they're so easy to do. And I could just continue on and on and on and finish them up. But I think you get the gist, right? These are Transformers from Stampendous. And I've used them with just colored pencils. Boy, did I make a mess of my colored pencils, but I used them with just colored pencils. Not watercolor pencils, there's a difference. I didn't use any water with these at all. I just used mineral spirits or Gamsol. Boy, do I have these out of order. All right, I'll put them in order later. Wowie. So we played with the snowmen and we played with the gnomes and we've changed shapes and we've colored. We made him melt. <laughs> we gave him his little wonky uh-oh face. We made our little gnomes with a regular beard and with a long beard and with braids sticking out and braids going in. And, and I mean, the options are really just very limitless. You just can go and go. These guys are looking up to the sky saying, snow. <laughs> so I'm going to keep these handy because we might come back to them. But the, and then of course there is the, there is the sentiment set. And the sentiment set, put this one back on there. The sentiment set also has the capabilities of I mean, you can stamp it straight. And each of the sets have their own sentiment set. So the winter has a winter set and the everyday has, um, the everyday the sentiments are more, gosh, those are hard for me to read. Your heart and my heart are very old friends. Friends help us smile wider and laugh longer. When I stamp them, I'll be able to see them better. <laughs> On a wintry day, thoughts of you warm my heart so straight.
if I can I don't know how close to a circle I can get. Hmm, not bad. So you can see they move. Easy peasy. And this is the sentiments for the winter. All right, let's move on to the everyday. The everyday is a little bit different, but the same. You have three stamp sets of everyday, although those gnomes do come with cute little flowers, so they could be everyday too. You've got a floral, you've got butterflies, and you've got birds, and then the sentiments. So I'm gonna quickly stamp some of the birds, some of the there we go. So I've got my two birds here going left and right. Let's stamp a couple of these real quick so you can see them. So I'm going to stamp him just the way he's supposed to be. Just the way he's supposed to be. One, two, three. Now let's change him up a little bit. And let's make him a little, maybe a little taller. A little thinner. Squish his little head down. Maybe give him just a little bit more of a tummy. Now he's a little thinner. <laughs> and what if we really squish him down? Three different sizes, three different shapes. Maybe we don't want them as, as tall as that one. All right, let's find a happy medium. That's all out of one bird. You could have, I mean, you just have so many options to play with. And I haven't even done the second bird yet. Second bird's a little smaller. And he's facing the other way. So let's just do him just like he's supposed to be done.
So there's our little smaller bird. And then let's make him a taller bird. Let's get him really, really long. And then let's get him kind of really squatty. And you just move him. You play with it like a rubber band until you've got the shape that you want. I didn't get the back of him, but now you can see now he's really kind of squatty and then I can get one kind of not as totally as tall but not as kind of a happy medium so many options see this one's super long this one's got a little bit more of a tummy this is the original this guy got even more tummy here we have the original that's how they work let's oh and the flowers are the same so you've got florals in here too and the florals you can you can move them around and make them whatever you want them to however you want that flower to look you can twist it and move it and then I can pull it up and twist it and move it. Move that center a little bit. I've got a different floral and I could take it and move it again And now I've got another floral. They're all different, but they're all done out of the same stamp set. And they all come on the little birds. <laughs> they're so cute. Okay, let me put the little birds and let me show you. the butterflies and the dragonflies. See, I think you need to see them all stamped to understand what can be done with them. So I've got the butterflies and the dragonfly. Two big but two butterflies, one dragonfly. So let's play with 
Let's play with one of the butterflies. And again, it's hardy. You're really going to have to pull hard. I mean, you're going to have to attempt to try and rip it. It's just not going to happen. So let's do the butterfly as it is. Let's just do them so you can see. So there he is once. Now I can take and just move this up a little bit. And change him. And now there's less space between the two or I could then move the sides in And now he's changed again. Or I could pull this one down. And now he's changed again. And both butterflies are like that. So you've got a small and a big. So you're going to be able to change the sizing, change the shapes, change whatever makes your heart happy. And the dragonfly will also, dragonfly will also change. Let's grab the dragonfly. Oh, wrong side. Let's grab the dragonfly. And let's do them just the way you're supposed to. He's always going to go back to his original shape. And then let's maybe change him just a little bit. And we'll put that right up against him. And now he'll have less space there. So now I've closed up the space here. I've closed that up a little tighter. And then I can pull his wings in a little bit if I want. Now his wings are even tighter together. Original, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then you can just, you can open him up. A 
almost make them look mothy. Put them more towards the top. Now look at how big he is. It's up to you what you want to do. How about that? Did you ever think you'd get so many different shapes out of one stamp? And I could keep going. Between the butterfly, now the butterflies and the dragonflies are on the same stamp set. And the birds and the flowers are on the same stamp set. Let's put him over here and let's grab the big floral. So, so far these have pretty much been all one piece and you just manipulate them. The big floral is made up of a couple different pieces. So you've got this big, beautiful floral, but it's not one big stamp. It's made up of a few of them. So you've got one big flower outline, and then you've got a stamp here to act as a separator to make it look like petals, and then a center. This gives you even more options to play with. So let's just do it the way it's supposed to be done. Let's put this one somewhere around here. And let's put this one somewhere around here. Now let's see what we get. So here you have even more options because you have more pieces to work with. Give a good press. Hopefully I got the whole thing. And, uh, oh yeah, that looks good. So there I've got my first floral. But for where I go from them is entirely up to me. I can completely change the entire shape of this. Just kind of depends upon what I want it to look like. Do I want it to be kind of maybe a little smaller, a little tighter? Do I want to elongate some of it. I don't know, that's a weird looking rose, but we're going to go for it. And I'm just going to use that center piece. I'm 
can kind of spread that out too. What's the worst that can happen? It's a flower. No two flowers are alike. Got another flower. Gosh, you could almost make that a leaf, but they come with leaves. Um, I could take and really spread it out and make it a really big flower. And put this piece back in and really spread that piece out so now I've got a really big flower Is going to be a little different just depending on how you move them. If I don't want to use these at all, the big one, I don't have to. I'm going to probably put this one up here. Hmm. Now I've just used the two. Smaller pieces. It's amazing how versatile you can be. and it's always going to go back to its original shape. What you do with it after that is really up to you. How you interpret a flower is entirely up to you. And you can just go and go and go and go and go until you've covered your whole page. But I want to play with the fine tech. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do one more of these. And let's kind of make it a little big. And let's kind of stretch that all out, transform it, and then let's just kind of put
Okay, so I've got my flour done. I'm gonna put that over there. I'm gonna play with the fine tech for a little bit. And I might even go back and start with maybe maybe some of the ones that I did earlier. Okay, so fine, fine tech. These are their uh, iridescent interference colors. So they're gonna be transparent, translucent, but they're going to leave behind one of these, these the, the interference that you see. This one's kind of like a yellowy green, and here you've got like a, a purpley and a blue and a pink. We also have the new, well, the neon sets. I'll tell you, these are about half the price of the neon set. You're like, why is the neon set so expensive? Well, because it is so pigmented. Now, what these look like here and what they look like when we're done is a world of difference. This is a new set for us. This is not a new set. You may already own these. I also have the 12 pack. And don't be confused with other product. Fine Tech is going to say Fine Tech. You're looking for the little pans, the little square pans. We also have the 12 pack. This is also not a new set for us, but I may end up playing with it today, so I brought it out. Pretty, right? The colors are beautiful, and on black, they're majestic. So I'm going to move this over to the side, and I'm going to lay this right on top. Now, because they're watercolor, you have to let them bloom. So I've got a little bit of water in my Turbo Mister from Couture Creations. And you know, the nice thing about Fine Tech also is that the pans are easily changeable. So in the store, we carry the pans open stock. You can literally come in, and I have, I think, 60 colors, maybe more. Some of them are high, I mean, some of them are highly pigmented. One of them actually has real silver in it, and I want to say the pan retails for about $22. Most of them are between six and eight dollars, and we sell the open, the tins empty, so you can create your own sets. But the nice thing to know is that if you were to sell or go out of one color, you don't have to replace the whole pan. Now, we will be adding the open stock into our online store. Absolutely. I will announce as soon as we are able to do that. <laughs> but yes, we will have it in the online store. So the pans are really easy to use, but because they're watercolor, you need to add water to them. And you let that water sit there and kind of get the the paint going, it's blooming. Now the water, you don't have to worry about. If you are done with your watercolor paints, you just set them aside, let the water evaporate, and then close them up. The water doesn't hurt anything. I'm gonna grab a piece of black paper just so you can see what these colors look like on black because these are the interference colors, which means you can add them on top of anything else that makes your heart happy. If you have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put them on top of colored pencils, you can put them on top of your inks, you can put them on top of just about anything to add that additional color. So I've got my paints, a little bit of water, a little water on my brush, and so I can clean my brush. Okay, so I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to pick up some color. Uh-huh, right? Okay, and did you see how little I used? That's the difference. Fine art product isn't 
that it's meant to be used by fine artists, sure they want to use it because it's the best. Fine art denotes the quality of the product, how much pigment is used, what kind of product was used to make the finished pans or, or whatever you're using, fine art brushes. It, it, it isn't about the talent level, it's about the quality of the product. So I don't want people to be afraid of something that is a fine art medium because we have some fine art product that is actually cheaper than lesser product in the paper crafting world. Anytime you type on the word scrapbooking, card making, for some reason the price just goes zoop. <laughs> Sound effects required everybody, zoop. <laughs> and, and you can find beautiful product that does the same thing only better in fine art stores or craft stores that will save you money. Might cost a little bit more in the get-go, but the fact that you're going to have it forever, when sometimes it's even cheaper from the get-go. Brushos, brushos are a great example of that. How do we feel about those? Now this is this is the fine tech. It's not the premium set. So this set isn't nearly as expensive. I want to say that these would average about 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, maybe, maybe $5 a pan in the set. So maybe the set is around $30, somewhere in that range. So for six, that's a value because you're going to use them forever. and a little goes. A little goes a long way. Let's do the last two colors. And I just have my Turbo Mister next to me so I can always be adding water to get them to bloom. This one almost looks like rose gold. Doesn't take a lot. I'm not putting a lot on my paintbrush. Less is more. And I'm not using watercolor paper. This is just my 100 pound black paper. If you use watercolor paper, well, my gosh, it's even going to be more spectacular. What do you think? Those are the interference. I think they call them iridescence. They start like this. They end like that. And that's on black paper. Wow. Can you blend them? Of course you can. Absolutely. Yes, without problem. Sure you can. Um, what if we took a little bit of this? And we took a little bit of this. And we took a little bit here. Come in here. And 
and now it's up to me how I want to blend them. I can take and maybe mist a little bit. I can add water, more water to my paintbrush. and blend them in that way. It's totally about options. These give you the availability to do just about anything you want to do. I can add some texture to it. And I can literally just go. You want it to blend a little more? Add some water. I'm adding it straight to my paper. You could certainly just pick it up on your paintbrush. I'm all about the sparkle and the shine. You want to blend them, blend away. You want to add more, you add more. You want to take, you want to take away. You want to take away. You want to add some texture. Go in, you can add texture. You want to take away? Pull it off. When it's dry, you're going to, you know, it becomes more permanent. But while it's still wet, you still have options. You want to start again? That's the mark of a high quality product is when you've got options. And I'm on 100 pound paper and my paper is not getting all balled up and beaded up. And again, that's a testament not to my paper. Oh no, that's a testament to the product I'm using. up a little water. So this is the iridescent. Much different than the neons. The neons, let's play with those for a minute. The neon's on black. Let's try it on black. Let's get my paintbrush clean. And let's cut a sheet of black and see what we get. That's not what I'm looking for. 
So the neons do not carry any iridescence to them. You are not going to get this. Because there's nothing in there for the iridescence to come through. It's pigmented differently. Let's grab a piece of white. Bloom that up again and remind me to clean my brush. Now that's a color. Hello, green. Now you may be saying that's too green for me. I don't do bright, but wait. Hello, blue. Now they're calling this a neon blue. Yeah, maybe. And then hello, purple. And again, they're calling this a neon. Maybe. Look at the pigment base on that. And then we've got pink. Okay, I, I would probably agree that this is a neon pink. Oh, I love it. <laughs> okay, very hard to find watercolor paints in that kind of a, and I'm using so little. I keep adding water to my paints. So I'm picking up just a little bit. Yeah, I call that a neon orange. But wait. Oh, these colors are gorgeous. This is probably the most expensive paint set I've ever carried. These, I want to say these retail, they list for about $70. So about $10, maybe a little more than $70, uh, $12 a pan maybe. I think we, we retail them somewhere in the $50 range. So a little under $10 a pan. Yeah, this is definitely a, a, a want and not a need on the neons. The iridescents are so much less money, but they do different things. What do you think? Oh, it's so pretty, right? So now how do I use all of this stuff? Well, let's say I was playing with these guys. And let's say I brought over my iridescent set and let's say I didn't have little fingerprints everywhere, but I do. Let's say I re-bloom up that blue. Make sure I don't have any. And maybe I'll just change my brush. Put some water on my brush. And let's play with the blue. So I've got some of my blue here in the iridescent. And now all I have to do is paint my little, my little snowman in 
it's not going to change my colored pencil because this is a transparent paint. Not going to change my colored pencil. It's going to leave that the beautiful blue that it is. What it's going to do is add a beautiful blue finish when you kind of move them back and forth. You're going to have that beautiful blue. Oh, that looks so good. <laughs> okay, I didn't do his face yet, but look at his body. He just, yay. I love it. Love, love, love. <laughs> Oh, that makes my heart happy. And I'm just going in and I'm just painting him. So you can take any, any medium that you've inked and colored and st Oh, isn't that happy? <laughs> okay, love that. I could come in with a little bit of my orange. Where's my big one? Anybody see what I did with my other paintbrush? Yeah, me neither. Oh, let's see if I can get a little bit of orange on there. You would use a smaller paintbrush than this. And I got his nose orange. Look at that beautiful blue over the top of him. See, and look at how much orange is on my, it really takes very little. Less is more. Um, do we want to, I don't know, do we want him to be pink? I don't know. What's the worst that can happen? I'm just going to color right over the top of him. I'm putting on a little bit of that kind of pinky purple. Just paint it right over the top of him. It's there, but it's not. It's like magic. You move it one way, you see one thing. You move it another way, you see another thing. I'm just painting it on. Lots of water. Because really, Picking up the water, the water has more than enough of the pigment in it. I'm not changing my blue. Look at how cute is he? So we can do it on the, what did I do with my little piece? We can absolutely have it on the black, oh, here. And it looks stunning on the black, but as an accent, it looks good on the white too. This little orange nose. And here I didn't even go in with the Gamsol. There I didn't even, I didn't even fix him with the Gamsol. I left him just pencil. Lots of water. And if you don't want to do the Gamsol, don't. Just put a little bit of some shimmery, shiny happiness on top of him. 
It's changing him without changing him. It's adding a little something something without it being overtly blingy. I didn't do his face. And it is a dramatic difference and it does add a little something to it. And it makes them pop off that background. Right? I could come in and, gosh, I could even take my normal colors. So the normal colors are a combination, their their color, but their irid or their their pearlescent. And again, this set we've had before. Just to give you an idea. See, not enough water. More water is better. And the colors are stunning. They're not the same as the interference colors. So there's a few of the colors on black and a few of the colors do that. Let's cut this piece. The other colors on white. And then we're going to go back to that rose or that flower because you can make it whatever you want from Stampendous. So they're completely different looking. Depending on the paper that you use. So totally different looking. You still get a beautiful sheen, a beautiful shine. You just have to decide, is this what you want to use when you're working on a certain project? And again, I could come in I could just load up my brush a little bit. And add it over the top. And then my hat's going to have a little bit more depth of color, a little bit of a sheen. If it's too much, not a problem. Take your wipey. Wipe back some of your color. You have options.
I could take my iridescent. -y. And grab some of this. And just kind of add some down. I could go in. Paint his little beard gray. And it'll have a metallic look to it. They're easy to use, they're fun, they're effective, and they look just a little bit dreamy. <laughs> So now I'm gonna go back to that rose. Remember we were here, I had this one. Gosh, I hope I left enough room. Let's see. Yeah, I think I've got enough room for some leaves. So I'm gonna change this entirely. I'm gonna make it look like something completely different. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my neons to do it. Oh <gasps> Stacy! Okay, let's see if I can fix that drag my thing right through it. Well, happy day for me. <laughs> okay, let's try not to do that. Okay, I think I've got enough room. You think I should stamp one more just to be on the safe side? Yes, stamp one more just to be on the safe side. I'm gonna use that one, but I'm gonna stamp one more just to be on the safe side. Maybe we'll do both of them. So this is definitely a different flower than the way it was meant to be. I took it and I transformed it. So I moved little bits and pieces. I made it bigger than what it was supposed to be. Good. Now, if something happens, I've got my other one. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to grab my neons. And I'm going to start with my blue. Get out some of my other color. Oh yeah, see, it's got tons of color in there. Little bit of fine tech goes a really long way. But let's see what happens. It's only paper. And I have another one just in case. <laughs> and I'm just gonna add my blue. And I'm gonna go all the way around my flower. And I'm not gonna care how I get it down there. I'm not painting it. I'm just, just wanna get some blue on here. I'm gonna go all the way around my flower, but I'm not gonna go in my flower. Okay. There, I've got some blue going. Now, what color do you like? How about green? Let's try green. More water. And let's add some green. This 
Same thing, I'm going to go all the way around, but I'm not going to add it in. All the way around my flower, but not in my flower. And how about some of this wild pinky purple? Okay, kind of got a hot mess going on there, right? Now what happens if I kind of take it off? What do you mean take it off? You just put it on. What, oh, maybe I even do some of this bright pink. Why not? Live a little, right? Now what if I go in and I take it off? Mm, what do you mean? Well, what if I kind of missed it and pull some of this color, pull some of this color off? Kind of missed it. and pull some of this color off. Just with paper towel. And that's where I'm at. Now I can add more color back in if I want. Maybe I want some more blue. Maybe I want to get a little closer. Maybe I want to add a little more blue in here. And I like that pink. That pink was really nice. And I like the purple. Maybe I want more green going on. I want to get up a little close. Anywhere where I was a little far away from my stamp, I'm just going to go in there. If I go into my stamp, I don't care. Oh no, I got green in my stamp. What am I going to do? No problem. And then let's just kind of dab it off. Blend it in. This is like not thinking. Do not think about this. Just go. Do not give it rhyme or reason, just let it be. And where you think you were like, oh no, I don't like it at all, it's awful. We're gonna finish. And then you're gonna tell me, oh no, I don't like it at all. You know what, I do have this one, let's do it again. So, start with a little blue, and this time I am literally, oh I want more water. This time I'm literally just gonna Dab it in. And my colors are already blending in there because I didn't clean my brush. Hot mess city. I'm just trying to avoid that flower. And a little green. And this time maybe a little of the yellow.
And let's wipe some of it off. So I can put a little water here, I can put a little water on my paper. I just want to go in there and blot it off. Get rid of those brush strokes, or those little blobs, or more blobs than brush strokes. And anywhere I need more, let's come in. and do a little more. And if I accidentally get some in my flower, I'm okay with it. Okay, what do we think? You want it lighter, miss the paper, and you can literally peel off more of the color. You want it lighter, miss the paper, and peel off more of the color. That's the beauty of this product, is that it gives you so many different ways of working with it. Beautiful background. We want this one lighter. Go in and miss that paper. And just pick it right up. All right. Now we're going to do our flower. Now these are the neon colors, remember. That look neon-y to you? I don't know. I got a little bit of green in there. And I'm on a hundred pound paper, not watercolor paper. Now let's go in and let's Play with some of the color. So maybe I put a little yellow in here. And then I go in a little bit of my orange. Outside the lines, no big deal. Too orange for you? Pick up some of the color. And I'm just being free with my color. How about some of the pink? And I tie that pink into that orange, and that orange into that yellow. This is easy painting, easy watercolor. I've got this fabulous background that's all done with watercolor. Too bright? All right, let's pick up some of the color. You want it darker? Go back in and add color.
You look at that and you say, too dark. You come in and you pick up color. I want that center more yellow. I take away color. And I'm on 100 pound paper. Get rid of some of my orange over here because I got a lot of it going on. Let's get some of my yellow. That's neon color. But is it neon? I'm not 100%. I mean, yes, it's neon. I get it. But does it have to be neon? I don't know. I'm loving my flower. More pink. More pink. So this is where I fall prey to the just walk away I need to just walk away. I need to, because I will continue to play with this until there's nothing left to be played with. <laughs> I, I mean, I will literally keep painting on top of it and on top of it and on top of it. So here, how about we take that pink, woo, and let's get it really wet. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty pink. But because the fine tech is so highly pigmented and so easy to use, a little bit of water, I mean, that is pretty pink. A little bit of water, pick up some of your color. And what if I go back in with some of that purple? Oh, dark. And I'm just, I'm just scribbling. I'm not really painting. I'm just kind of scribbling it in there. because then I can go back and kind of pick up some of that color and blend them together. Oops, got on the outside. Okay, I got a little purple. See it right there? Now I don't. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about the orange. I don't know about the blue either. No, definitely not the blue. all about what you want it to look like.
Okay, so I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna do the center. I'm gonna pull that center out. And maybe I go ahead and do just a little bit of that orange. Ooh, okay, like the orange. And I'm pretty much just using the water the pigmented water. Okay, I'm getting there. I'm digging on that. I'm liking that one. And then we have the, the leaves. Now the leaves are also transformers or transformers. So the leaves, I can, I can just stamp the way they're supposed to be. Let's do this one. This one's a little drier. Got a little water, a little orange there. So the leaves I can do just the way the leaves are supposed to be. I did too much. And stamp. Nope, not dark enough. Paper too wet. Let's see if we can realign it up. Better, but my paper's still a little wet. And then I can change my leaves and pull them to be something else. So I can make it longer and I can I can change the shape of it so that it doesn't look anything like the leaf I just did. totally different looking leaves. Same, same stamp. Same stamp. I could change them again. Pull them off and make this one a little fatter. Maybe rotate this one a little differently. And make this one much bigger than what it's supposed to be. And a totally different leaf again. So by the time you're done, your project has got, I mean, just from one stamp, Transformers. This doesn't look anything like this. And this doesn't look anything like that. And yet, they are the same. And I could go back in. And if I wanted to add a little more green, I could go back in and paint a little more green in.
Doesn't take a lot. And these are neon. Trim off the extra noise. It's probably a little bit bigger than a slim line. But everything done with those neon colors and transformers. The colors are so beautiful and so vibrant. Come in. And put some leaves. And then change your leaves. And squish them and change the shape. Move them around. You can make them as organic as you want. Leaves are millions and millions and millions and millions of different shapes. There is no right and there is no wrong. This one doesn't look a thing like that, and yet it was the same leaf. This one, no, doesn't look like that either, and yet it was the same leaf. Do I want to add more color? I can add more color. I, I mean, the options are mine to do with. More pink. Too much pink. Got pink there. Oops. Take it away. Maybe I want to add a little bit of color, kind of around. Maybe I like that. Maybe I want to go in and define these a little bit more and add a little bit more green to them. And I'm not painting. I'm dabbing. <laughs> I'm an excellent dabber. You've got options. I could continue and I'm on 100 pound paper and it hasn't balled up and it hasn't flaked away. And I wish I could say that had everything to do with me, but it doesn't. It has everything to do with the quality of the paint because less is more.
Yay. Okay, they make my heart happy because they're easy to do. I made my background, I made my flower, I transformed everything. I changed the look of everything we were doing. No two anythings are the same, even though you only bought one stamp set. One stamp set to give you all those birdies. One stamp set to not only give you all those butterflies, but all the dragonflies too. All the different little flowers, the phrases. These are a little bit of happiness all in a transformer. Look at the, oh, see, look at the fine tag. Ooh, -ee. <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> look at the fine tag. Oh, I'm, oh, there he is. I'm like, I missed a spot. No, I didn't. Nope, something's here. Look at the fine tag. It's just paper. Okay, so we did a lot. We took transformers and we just changed them. Started like this, then I moved it like that, then I moved it like that. We had options. We took fine tech. Ooh, yummy. And we played with it. And you see how amazing the colors can be. Yes, a little bit expensive. It's a, it's definitely an investment. This isn't something that you're like, hmm, well, yeah, maybe, maybe not. You have to be, yeah, totally. And now I'm just gonna let these set and dry and then I can close them up. I'm not gonna try and get the water out. I'm just gonna let them dry and then they're gonna be good to go again. We played with the, Hero Hughes, beautiful, easy to do. You saw how lovely it doesn't move. How much water did I, and this is still wet, and how much water did I add? And the Hero Hughes India ink does not move, does not move. All right, so let's give it up for Fran and her Fransformers. Awesome idea, awesome concept. Little bit of design envy over here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, but you know what? If somebody's gonna come up with something that fabulous, I am glad it was Fran. I am glad it was Stampendous. What do we have for sale for you? Okay, so iridescent colors. These are the white ones. If it says iridescent, it's these. They don't, they're white, but not really. Or on the snowman. Look at how cute is he? <laughs> so we have iridescent. We have the neons, which look like this. And look like this but made this and that. I know, Fran, I'm not the best watercolorer. You're amazing. I, I just, I'm, I'm in it for the, well, you're in it for the joy too, but your talent surpasses, no doubt. And then we have the 12 pack of pearlescence, which is all of these. So we've had this set before, we've had the iridescent set before, the new ones are the neons. And if you live locally, you're welcome to come in and make your own sets. Okay, then we have Transformers. So I've got an I Want It All bundle is gonna get you everything. And then we've got two smaller bundles. We've got the Everyday Bundle, so you're gonna get the butterflies and the, the dragonfly. You're going to get the flower that I worked with, which allows you to make so many different things. You're going to get, oh, how did I have two of them? You're going to get the, the birds and the flowers. And again, you're going to tweak those to make a million different things. And you're going to get the sentiment set. So then we have the, 
the holiday set which has the gnomes now the gnomes can be used for every day too because they've got flowers and leaves but they've also got winter elements as well so we've included them as the winter set then i have got two snowmen two different sizes two and facing two different ways so I can't even imagine if you had both of these how many different snowmen you could actually achieve and then you can mix and match their hats and their embellishments and the string of lights and the scarves and the mittens and then we have the sentiment so for the i want it there'll be an i want it all that includes all eight and then there'll be an everyday package if you just want the everyday and there'll be a, a holiday package if you just want the holiday then we'll have the Gamsol kits in. We're expecting our Gamsol kits in any time now. So we are uh, so we shouldn't have a problem sending some of these expedited orders out. Um, Gamsol kits should be here in plenty of time. And we've got the erase or the pencil sharpener for you as well. Gosh, I think that's it for this. Huge. Oh, and the pencils. <laughs> I've got to find them. I've got to get back down to them. So then we've got the the colored pencils. <laughs> I've got 12s, I've got 24s, and I've got 36s. Do you absolutely have to have the Brunzil? No. Are they fabulous? Yes. You make the decision. You're buying a quality product, fine art level where you're just going to they're just going to last you. This is an investment. These are going to keep forever. Lovely. Okay, let's do samples. So B B was playing with the neons. SMS girl B, <laughs> she likes the neons. <laughs> okay, samples. Well, hello. So you've got just the, just them stamped right on. Isn't that beautiful? Mr. Snowman. Mr. Snowman with a little bit of fine tech going on and we elongated him. And look at how pretty is this. Just using that beautiful floral oh, and going stamping over and over. Changing it up a little bit. That's the small one. Here's a big one, a medium and a small. And just trimming it out. So over stamping and then just trimming it down. Look at how cute is he, right? So we just elongated the stamp. So instead of having a nice roundy snowman, we've got a little tall, thin guy. And he's holding the banner and he's got the hat and here's your sentiment in, the, in a little bit of a swirl. Same snowman. Here he is a little more roundy. Now, is that amazing that you can do both? Oh, I guess it's the two different, the small and the large. Wait, 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 wait. Same snowman, isn't it amazing? Nope, I'm still wrong. <laughs> Same snowman, isn't it amazing that you can do both? <laughs> I'll get it eventually. <laughs> so there he is a little more roundy. There he is a little taller. Well, this is the normal size and this has been altered. <laughs> but he is darling. <laughs> okay, I've got my birds, my Laurel and Hardy birds. <laughs> and again, my sentiment is bent over and it just fran forms like everything else. I've got, oh, with fine tech, I've got my, my butterfly and my, my dragonfly with fine tech. I've got another Laurel and Hardy bird <laughs> done with the colored pencils. Floral, a little bit of bling, a little bit of fine tech. A little bit of shimmer, a little bit of shine. And I love this one. I love how they took the sentiment and included it as part of the sun and they just curved it right to it. Very clever little, you know, they're, they've been, they've been altered just a little bit. They've been stretched and, and plumped down. 
And how pretty is that? Using the neons. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm not exactly sure. This guy is, he's on his tippy toes. <laughs> <laughs> but that really does show you just how much you can you, you can manipulate the transformers. And look at how pretty. They're just fun and easy. We've got fine tech on the back. They're fun, they're easy. They're affordable because you get so much, because you can alter it and do so many different things. That's where the value comes in. When you buy a stamp set, usually you just get the one stamp and it's going to be, you're going to stamp the same image again and again and again. And, and that's great. That's fine. But when you have a stamp set that lets you modify and tweak, well, that's a little bit of happiness. And curve the stamp set, curve the sentiment. How cute is that? Right? And doesn't, <laughs> aw, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yes, you can get that with the stamp set. You just manipulate the outline. Turn the little, turn your frown upside down. So this time we turned the smile upside down and he's got a little frown going on. Okay, are their faces going? The, yes, so this one and this one were done out of the same stamp set. Right? Shut the front door, right? Holy smokes, artichokes, that's amazing. And look at how cute is this. And our little gnomes. You're only limited by the size of your block. Because <laughs> I was stretching some of them almost too big to fit my block. <laughs> Love them. Look at the shine and the sparkle on that. That's fine tech. And look at our roundy Nomi. They opened this one as wide as they could. Look at how wide she is. She's a little happy girl. So pretty. Oh, but that one goes that way. You got your little sentiment. How cute is he? And then the last I have is here. And then one layout for you. Claire put together a layout for you. She's used the dragonflies and fine tech. She's done them in different combinations. So you can see the three dragonflies are all slightly different, even though they were the exact same stamp. Franz Formers. Don't forget that name because it's awesome.
All right, so I'm gonna tilt up. I'm gonna say, hey everybody. Yeah, it was long, it's always long, What's whatever. <laughs> I had fun, <laughs> I hope you had fun. I love playing with this stuff. Oh my gosh, I could sit here all day, but uh, I have to work. <laughs> I have expedited shipping, I have orders, spellbinders. Spellbinders, I need to go down and start working on um, expediting this week's spellbinders. Your Tim Holtz orders have either already shipped to you, your stamps and stencils, they, they, they're shipped to you or uh, are upstairs being shipped. If you place an order for this YouTube and you do a pay now and you only pick items from this YouTube, no other items from any other category, and you do it by Friday, next Friday, 6 p.m. Not 9.30, not, not Saturday morning, 6 p.m. Friday. Downstairs is processing your orders and getting them out. Upstairs is handling the orders that where you, you wanted one of this and one of this and you wanted something on the going, going, gone, and then you wanted to add a Tim Holtz. Upstairs is handling all of those orders. But if you want expedited shipping, then you only order from the YouTube Yummies category. You pay, has to be paid for by Friday at 6 p.m. So if you do a pay later, absolutely. But then you need to call us. It, you have to call us and say, I want this to ship out as quickly as possible. By all means, I'm gonna give you my credit card even though it was a pay later. Absolutely. And then downstairs is working on them. Now some, some months or some YouTubes, we get uh, it's almost exclusively expedited. So downstairs is handling hundreds and hundreds of orders. So they're going out as fast as they can. Some YouTubes, it's much easier and much faster and we're able to get them out to you sooner. Regardless of the fact, if you want your order sooner, <laughs> follow the expedited rules that will be part of the YouTube yummies. It'll be right there for you. And then you make informed decision. If you want all of this stuff, but you wanna pay later on, absolutely. Lock up the sale price. Yeah, lock it up. And and know that quantities are limited on the Transformers because we have them before anybody else. So lock them up and then pay your invoice when the PayPal payment comes due. Or if you want to take advantage of getting over $50 free shipping and you want to add a few gems and a few maybe some, some um, fairy dust or something from memory box, little like glitter glues or whatever, oh, that's great too. It just won't, it'll just ship as a normal order. You make the decision. Either way, it's great with us. We're just thrilled to have you as a customer. <laughs> We're so glad to still be here. <laughs> all right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you all next week, and I hope you enjoyed everything. Bye.